God bless you and thank you so much for joining us again on the program Anointing. I'm Apostle of course of Vincent because of Christ at the International Church. Thank you so much for your consistency. We know that this time is a very difficult time all over the world. The, world, the pandemic is you know, wreaking havoc, but we know that our only source of hope and antidote to counteracting the works of the enemy through this pandemic is Jesus Christ. So I want you to join me in prayer as we seek the Lord's face and guidance as we, before we begin our program. Eternal God and King, thank you so much. We bless and glorify you. We praise you for the grace that is upon us through Christ Jesus. We thank you for the enablement of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And we thank you also, Father God, for the ready access afforded us through the shed blood of Jesus to come into your presence in Jesus' name. We pray that this moment will be a moment of divine intervention, a moment of answers and results, a moment of hope, a moment of triumph and victory, a moment of breakthrough in Jesus' name, a moment, Father God, in Jesus' name, of God's powerful, assertive, authority over the forces of mayhem and chaos, especially COVID-19 chaos in Jesus' name. We pray that you will be manifested and glorified and magnified. Be with my mouth in Jesus' name. I speak truth, mighty God, to bless your people. We speak hope, speak victory. We come against fear and anxiety, mighty God, in Jesus' name. But we pray, Father God, that your word, mighty God, in Jesus' name, will not return to your void. It will do exactly what you are directed it to do in Jesus' name in the lives of your people and in the lives of our world, especially this time. Rise to be glorified and magnified that the Holy Spirit have his own way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you so much. And please, if you have your Bible, shall we look at the word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 7? We'll read from verse 4 to 12. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4 to 12. So the children of Israel put away the bales and the astros and said the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I'll pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel jeered the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the laws of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day, and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. And the men of Israel went out to Miss of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drew, drove them back as far as Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin and called his name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far has the Lord led us. God bless you so much in Jesus' name. This indeed is an all too familiar scripture especially in those of us that are consistently engaged in spiritual warfare. We take no inspiration from this scripture, how God brought victory to his people. But there are certain essential elements in this scripture that I believe it is also recommended for us because God never changes. He's forever the same. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, 
The same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. There's no change in him. If there's ever a change, it is our relationship that gets to affect or occasion the change. When we change, and instead of making him God, we make other things God. Because here in verse 4, Bible says, They gave up all the bales and the ashes. It is akin to uh, Genesis chapter 35 when God told Jacob to move from Shechem. Because 20 years to that moment, uh, Jacob was running away from his brother Esau after supplanting him and getting the blessing, you know, that should have gone to the firstborn, of course, aided by the mother Rebecca. And then when he reached a place that is called Luz, he put some stones there and there was nothing there for him. So he gathered some, a stone and used the stone as his pillow. Sleeping on the stone, the, the Lord op heavens opened and then he wrestled with the Lord, and then the rest is history. The Lord blessed him, and then what he had, he said, if I go and I come back, I'll come back, I'll come this, to this place, give my tithe and give an offering. But when he went and he was coming, now he's got his family, he was wealthy, he forgot to go back to the place that he named Bethel, which is the house of God. And then he went and settled in a place that was already settled by people who don't fear God, who don't serve God, who don't follow God. And his daughter, Dinah, was, you know, um, uh, molested over there. It's akin to Genesis chapter 13, when Abraham and Lot has to separate. Because at that time, Lot too has, you know, amassed some wealth and their shepherds were always bumping heads. Abraham told me, separate from me, where did he choose? The Bible says, Abraham said, choose, you, choose, you can choose anywhere, the north, the south, the east. He looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah because it was already a settlement. People are there, prosperous, and then he moved towards that place. We always have to be careful that our movement is directed by God, dictated by God, inspired by God. You just don't pick yourself and move to a place. So this is what the children of Israel did. God has led them to this place, settled, and then they turned, and they were worshiping idols, demonic deities that God in Deuteronomy chapter 18 has warned them to stay away from. Stay away from this. God has drawn it out. Stay away from this. In fact, in the covenant, in the, in the commandments, in Deuteronomy, Esther chapter 20, as one, you shouldn't make any image of anything, the likeness in heaven or on, on earth to worship. So as a result of the people who were supposed to live a life of triumph and victory are now being or dominated by the things that they themselves, by destiny and by their nature and calling, were supposed to dominate. Imagine. The feeble things that were supposed to be beneath you, now you are beneath the thing that are supposed to be beneath you because of disobedience. But when Israel realized that they have sinned, nobody went telling them because they knew. Intuitively, they know. They have that innate quality of God in them. They are the seed of Abraham. As we are the seed of Abraham, when we sin, we know that we have sinned. The Bible tells us, especially in this new dispensation, in Hebrew chapter 8, verse 10, and 11, he says, uh, he will give us, <clears throat> he will give us a new, he will write his laws in our heart and in our minds. And no one will teach us to know God, know God. We will know. First, Peter, first John chapter 2, verse 27, the Holy Spirit says you don't need anyone to teach you anything, but he, the Holy Spirit, will teach you often. The Holy Spirit will, come, you know, will just will convict you and let you know that you are wrong. And yes, we are wrong. And there are so many people we are in denial. We have erred. We have sinned. At this time, we are not like the children of Israel, but the, 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 we got certain idols that we are worshiping. The idol of technological advancement. I'm not, I'm not anti-technology. I'm not anti-progress. But sometimes there are certain things that we are using and depending so much to supplant God. We don't attribute or ascribe our successes to him no more. 
We are successful because of this, because I'm smart, because I'm this. It is nothing like by the grace of God I made it. By the grace of God I get this. By the grace of God, no, no recognition of that. Especially, and God warned against that it was he knew who knew, who knows all things. Did mention it. Th that is the ultimate of ingratitude. A lack of recognition of God. And this divine grace that all good things has come to us. We sing a song, God Almighty, through whom all goodness flow. All goodness has flown through God to us. Um, we are wealthy, we are successful, we have got all these things, but where is his glory? Where is his, in Jeremiah chapter 7, he, was, he took Israel to tax. He said, you call the tree and the stones and the water bodies, your God, they're your father, but when we're in trouble, you are calling me. Why don't you call the stones? Why don't you call the water bodies, the rivers that you call them the, your idols? Why don't you call them to help you? That is exactly the state of affairs in Israel then. And now, the Bible says it is akin in Ezekiel 14 verse 3. And God said, these people have idols in their hearts. Yes, we become so prideful, so arrogant, sometimes dictatorial to what messages we want to hear from the pulpit. Some people have the audacity even to put some gang orders on the preachers. They can't preach what God tells them to preach. They have to water it down. So they go there, they are not fed, they are not being nurtured, they are not being nourished. Because they have put some gang order. The pastor is afraid to stay. The dust says the law because somebody's out there living in sin and you don't want to break bones. So because of that, because, hey, they are the one bankrolling the church. That's how it was here. So the people realize that they need God, that you cannot have God on top of your sin. So you have to give up something to have the glory and the majesty of God. And that's why they came to him. They have their idols. You see, and someone said, put them away. Put the pride away, put the sinful choices away. The Bible said they did it all day and God alone became their God. God alone became their God. Verse 4, I like that. Let God alone become your God, Yahweh. God become your God. No other God but him, Jesus Christ, and him glorified. That God become your God and set apart all other things. There are so many people who are even in churches and still prospecting for another God. How much God do you need? He's the be all and the end all. So Israel came back to the God of their father. And they were in that place at Mizpah. And then some of us are now, since we are put this away, it is like Jacob. When the people now in Shechem in, in, in Genesis chapter 35, God has spoken to them, move from this place. Because I didn't call you here in the first place. And now you came here on your own, and now you see what has happened. Your only daughter has been defiled. Because I didn't send you here. We have gone to certain place to put ourselves in certain situations that God didn't lead us. His presence didn't. We call ourselves to those places and we expose ourselves and our family, because this time his family got exposed to things that shouldn't have happened. Shameful, disgraceful, despicable experience. And God said, now get out from this place and go to the place where my presence is better. But the thing is, they realize that the thing is that people have got idols in the camp. So Jacob says, bring them all. He gathered them all, buried them somewhere. Time for us to bury the pride, bury the arrogance, bury certain things that, that we have that stands in opposition to the glory and to the worship of one, the one true God. The one true God. Some of you are made men to be your gods. Whatever, listen to me. 
there's only one Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says God alone became their God. God alone. They put everything aside and then they went to join someone to pray. There's the time for us to see God and go to a church that prays to the one true God. Not through other people or other things or other deities. Seek God and him alone. There's a time for us to seek him. So they came seeking him at Mizpah with the prophet Samuel. Hallelujah. This is the same Samuel that the mother wept and cried and suffered. And he was born and he was given to the land. God came and spoke to him. And the Bible says when he came of age in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. Samuel has been living with among them for 20 years. This same, he hasn't gone anywhere. He was living among them. There are true men of God that are living among you, but you don't recognize them. Because they will not prophet lie to you. They will not sell handkerchief to you. They will not sell oil to you. So you don't recognize them. You don't accept their ministry. But they are the ones who are teaching the truth from the word. They don't come and say things to you. They will rebuke you when you are living in sin. They will tell you, quit your fornication and your adultery. Stay true to your marriage. Stay true to your wife. Stay true to your husband. The marriage bed should not be defiled. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. The marriage bed undefiled. And if you are living with a woman, marry her. They will tell you the truth. And you don't like people like that. Because they cannot be bought. They will not sell their conscience. Someone was living among them. And they didn't want to go to him. Until trouble came. Then they realized, let us go to him. Because he's the one appointed 20 years ago by God. He didn't move. He was still with them. Bible says his word never fell to the ground. In First Samuel chapter 9, chapter 13, chapter 3, sorry, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Not a word. They went to him. It's about time that we go to the churches where the word is taught, where the Holy Ghost is, where they, they emphasize on the truth, where the pastor will rebuke you, not just to embarrass you, but to what? To restore you. And then you go there with contrition and humility. The people say, we have sinned. They were not told to say that they realized that we have sinned. They came with contrition. We have sinned and we have come to beg God. Let us come before God and pray that we have sinned. All our spiritual leaders from the pulpit to the pew to presidential palaces. We all have sinned spiritual leaders. We all have civil leaders. We all have sinned. And we are to come before God and beg his forgiveness. And the forgiving father, through his dear son Jesus, who hears us. They came before him. And while they were worshiping and doing those things, the devil who is always out there, in the time Christians congregate, Satan wants to have a piece of the action. Because he said, some people say, well, I started praying and yes, what you are seeing is not the end of it. It's what you are seeing, God is gathering your enemy to put one a stop to their actions. So while they gathered, the Philistines heard of it. That these people have gone to pray. They didn't attack them when they were worshipping the divorce. Listen. They would never attack, the Philistines never attacked them when they were worshipping the Baals, when they were worshipping the Asherahs, when they were worshipping the, those demonic deities. No, the Philistines never gathered against them. But when they decided to go back to the God of their fathers, to worship the Yahweh God, then they gathered against them. <laughs> oh, you see what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25? And when he says, Satan does not cast out Satan. No kingdom is divided against this itself. As soon as they were praying to the Yahweh God, 
the one, their father's God, who, the one who delivered them from Egypt, they came. Let the church start praying. You see, people will come all, all sorts of attacks. But do we have to stop? No. We stop for none. We give in to none. We make no apologies for having our faith in our God and serving our God and believing in him and preaching the truth. All sorts of, hey, kiosk. What are you Christian doing? What? It's like Nehemiah has gone to build the walls that was there before. The walls were there before, and then the enemies came, destroyed it, burned it down. He has gone to do a reconstruction. What is the problem of reconstructing something that was there before? What is wrong with going back to something that used to be the norm or the order before? They are going back as we are going back to God. Because it's where we should turn and come back to him. This is repentance. You turn around. Matanayo in the Greek, you make a 180 degree turn and then you start going. The enemy says, I don't understand. They came to fight. When you live your life like that, when you make a full turn and you are following God, that is when your battle becomes God's battle. Then you will fulfill the word of God gets fulfilled. The correct chapter 2. Verse 8, he says, you are the apple of my eyes. Psalm 69, verse 9 says, any reproach upon you will fall upon me. We should do this, come back to him, and leave this COVID-19 battle to the Lord. He will fight for us. The people have the audacity to come to the sacred ground in Mishpah to come and attack them while they were still praying. Uh, Someone was there calling upon the name of the audacity to come there to fight them. Little did the enemy know. Because this very same place where they were coming to fight this battle, Israel has fought them before. And Israel has lost the battle there before. In 1 Samuel chapter 4 verse 1, that was where they fought and Phinehas and Hophni and the sons of Eli died. And then they captured the ark. Because Israel sin God allowed the people to take the ark away. This time they have repented. Same people. But they have come back to their God. We are the same people who sin. But we have been received. The blood has interceded for us. The blood has washed us. We are, re we are reconciled. And we are back to our God. Same people. Same place. Now let us see how they, they battle. As soon as the people came and Samuel prayed, Bible said God sent tender and fire. May God send tender and fire against this demonic spirit that I plague our world. As we pray, may God hear us and send the same thunder and fire to counter the advancement, mighty God, of COVID-19 and the spirit of death in Jesus. And may all enemy forces, may he send thunder and fire in Jesus' name. Because when Israel panic and realize that we can, the same spot where we have lost our battles before, the same places where we have lost our battles, maybe our marriage battles, maybe our spiritual battles, maybe our financial battles, maybe health issues, wherever you have lost your battle, the same place. God said this time you are not because he has said the battle is mine. It's not yours to fight. It is mine to prosecute this war. Anyone who declares war on you, declare war on me. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 16. The battle is the Lord's. And you took up the battle and sent thunder and fire. He will make us spectators in our own war. And let us see the action. How God will deal as God dealt with Egypt. And let the, the rest he drowned them. Israel saw. And they were hurt. They were coming against it. Then the people that were themselves being pursued became cheerleaders. Started singing in Exodus 15. The horse and his rider, they are falling into the sea. May COVID-19 and his rider fall into the sea as we begin to pray. And we recognize the authority, the majestic authority and majesty of our God. He's the same. All he wants is for us to come to him.
return. As he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 7, 16 and 7, he says, this, you know, separate yourself, become my sons and daughters, and return to me, and I will return to you, and you will become my sons and daughters. May God's word come to you. I pray that this word will bless you, that we hear that there's Ebenezer before, that Ebenezer is a place. May God give us Ebenezer this moment, this time, this challenging moment. May we have our own experience of Ebenezer, how God has led us. I bless you. May the, lift up your hands, please, and let us pray. Father, I want to thank you so much. I pray that this word, mighty God in Jesus, will have profound meaning in the lives of your people. Their word will be a blessing. Your word will bring healing. Your word will bring inspiration. Your word will bring encouragement. Your word will bring hope to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, may your word counter all the works of the enemy in Jesus' name. Father God, bring peace and healing and comfort and grace to your people. I thank you for this moment. And I bless them all in Jesus' name. Touch anyone who is sick and heal them. Mighty God, deliver them in Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Invoke in the name of Christ Jesus, mighty God. As a counteraction, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Against, mighty God, the advancement of this COVID-19 menace in Jesus' name. Contain this contagion by your power and your majesty. In Jesus' name, as well as 12, 13, so when I see the blood, I will pass you by. Thank you, Jesus, for having us in your ears. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you so much, and I hope this ministry has been a blessing. Continue to please in Jesus to follow us. Stay blessed, and God bless you, and please take care of yourself. Until next week, I'm Apostle Vincent, a of Christ, at the International Church. <laughs>